Once upon a time, there was a farmer called Old MacDonald, who had a little dog, Patch. Old MacDonald often sang to the animals on his farm as he worked. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on his farm he had one cow, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo-moo, Old MacDonald had one cow, E-I-E-I-O. But where's my dog? There he is, said the cow. Woof! Old MacDonald has a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on his farm he has two sheep, E-I-E-I-O, with a baba here and a baba there, here a bar, there a bar, everywhere a baba. Old MacDonald had two sheep, E-I-E-I-O. But where's my dog? There he is, said the sheep. Woof! <laughs> Old MacDonald has a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on his farm he has three pigs, E-I-E-I-O, with a oink oink here and a oink oink there, here a oink, there a oink, everywhere oink oink. Old MacDonald has three pigs, E-I-E-I-O, but where is my dog? Oink! There he is, said the pigs. Woof! <laughs> Old MacDonald loved his cow and his sheep and his pigs. And he specially loved his little dog, Patch. The princess loved magic. She'd put on shows for her parents, the king and queen, and they'd cheer as she juggled made coins appear from their ears and pulled a rabbit out of a crown. So for the princess's birthday, the king and queen decided to give her a new magic book. She was thrilled and even more excited when they told her they'd arranged a party for her and invited all her friends. And even better, made her favourite cake, strawberry cheesecake. Mmm! But the princess wasn't allowed to eat anything until all the guests had arrived. Now, the princess wasn't known for her patience, but she had an idea. She opened up her new magic book and found a spell that would make her invisible. She said the magic words and poof! She was invisible. It was such fun. The princess did all the things she'd always wanted to do in the castle and had never been allowed to. She whizzed down the marble banisters without being told off. She roller-skated through the grand ballroom and no one lectured her. And she even tickled the king. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo, he giggled. I wonder who did that? Then the princess sneaked into the party room and picked up the strawberry cheesecake. Mmm, she said. But just as she was about to have a bite, the queen walked in and saw the slice of cake floating and screamed, Aah! And all the guests ran off too. The poor princess sat down. She was sad. Now she'd never have a party. All her guests had run away. She called out, but no one heard her. Luckily, the king was passing by. What's wrong, princess? he asked, looking in the wrong direction. I'm over here, wailed the princess, and I'm stuck being invisible and now my party's ruined. The king smiled and pulled out her magic book and found the invisible spell. He said some more magic words, waved his hands and poof, the princess was back. Oh, thank you, Father, she cheered. And I promise I'll never make anything invisible again. What about this cheesecake? All the guests came back and helped make the cheesecake disappear, and the princess had the best birthday ever. The story is called 
the enormous turnip. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, a little old man and a little old woman lived in a little house with an enormous garden. One day, they were planting some seeds when a friendly robin flew down to see what they were doing. Now leave those seeds alone, Robin, said the old man. They're turnip seeds, and I just love turnips. White, round, juicy turnips. The sun shone, the rain rained, and one by one the seeds grew. Stems grew up, tall and straight, with shiny green leaves, and silently, in the ground, the turnips were growing rounder and bigger. I think it's time to pull up our turnips said the old man. Oh, good, said the old woman. Then I can make some delicious turnip soup. It was a lovely sunny day and the friendly robin pecked at the biggest turnip top. Now leave that alone, robin, said the old man. It's too big for you. So the old man and the old woman pulled at the biggest turnip top. They pulled and tugged, but the turnip would not come out of the ground. Their neighbour, Farmer Straw, was passing by. You look as if you could do with some help, he said. So the farmer pulled, the old woman pulled, and the old man pulled, but it was no good. This turnip is really huge, said the old man. We need more help. The farmer whistled to his dog and his sheep. Then the dog pulled, the sheep pulled, the farmer pulled, the old woman pulled, and the old man pulled. It's no good, said the old man. Where can we get more help? Suddenly they heard a and the friendly robin flew down and tugged at the dog's tail. So the robin pulled, the dog pulled, the sheep pulled, the farmer pulled, the old woman pulled, and the old man pulled, and out came the enormous turnip. None of them had ever seen a turnip so big. The little old woman made a huge pot of soup, and there was still some turnip left over for the friendly robin. Is that... That's like what we found. That's right. <laughs> She's putting it on her head. Is that all right? <laughs> of course it is, Rocket dear. <laughs> it's a wig. You're meant to put them on your head. See, they make you look different. You can use them for dressing up. Oh, look at that. They're all different colours. I like that one. It's all sparkly. You can have great fun with wigs. <laughs> one day, it was raining very hard. The mice were getting wet as they did their shopping. The biggest mouse, Bob, wasn't happy. It was a long way home and they would get even wetter walking back. Just then, though, he saw an umbrella that someone had dropped. He waited to see if someone came back to pick it up, but nobody did. We can all walk home under this, Bob said to the other mice. So the mice picked up the umbrella and tried to walk underneath it. But it was very difficult to hold as the wind kept blowing it around. Even with all the mice holding onto it tightly, it wasn't easy. Suddenly, a big gust of wind blew and turned the umbrella upside down. The mice landed inside it with a bump. And all their shopping landed on top of them. Oh no, said Bob. We're going to get wet after all. But suddenly, the littlest mouse gave a shout. Look, he cried. And the littlest mouse was right. The umbrella had landed in the gutter where the rainwater was running along the street like a stream. 
and the umbrella was floating along the stream like a boat, full of the mice and all their shopping. So they sailed all the way home in the umbrella, and it was so exciting that they didn't mind about getting wet at all.